Hello. Um, I guess we'll get started. Um, you're in the school room, if that's an accident. You, I'll give you an opportunity to leave. Um, I, it's, um, yeah. It was a very badly named session, I think, because I, I looked at it, I, I, I set it up in September, and I looked at it and I said, I wouldn't go to that, I don't know what it's about. And so thank you for getting past that and um, actually turning up in this room. Uh, it's what I think is actually quite an interesting topic. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the scold suite of modules and how it can help you um, manage your media. So um, that's, a, <laughs> that's what I, I, I turn it to, scold Media Management and New Hope, for any Star Wars uh, buffs out there. Um, my name's James Golden. I'm a technical architect at Acquia and they're my contact details. And I use the New Hope, it's kind of partly in a reference to a talk that I gave at Drupal Down Under about three years ago on the media module. And the media module uh, at the time was an exciting sort of development in handling media on Drupal sites, and it wasn't without its problems. And I'm imagining some of you have encountered those problems. Um, and so I call, <laughs> and I also had sort of like some Lego Star Wars in there, so the New Hope kind of like... <laughs> made sense in terms of scold, maybe improving the experience with media. So, today, what we're going to talk about, um, an introduction to scold. Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief background on what scold is and, and why you would use it. We're going to look at um, some of the scold features um, that are both core to scold and a couple of sort of like extra providers. And then we're going to create an actual, uh, a, a very simple skull provider, more as a proof of concept than as, as, as final code, but just to get you thinking how skull can be used to do a lot of your media management and um, the editor experience that you, you'll be providing. So, as I said, skull is a suite of modules and it's focused on sort of managing and reusing media. All right, so, um, very important that we sort of like understand when you would use it and we'll go through some use cases but essentially the problem Scold is trying to solve is how to manage and reuse media throughout your site and in an editor friendly way. It's also important to note that Scold is one of a number of solutions to this problem and the most, the most common solution to this problem at the moment is media. We're going to be talking about a brief comparison between Scold and the media set of modules um, soon. There are other, um, there are other um, I think Asset is another module which sort of like tries to deal with the same problem. Okay, so there, there are a growing number of solutions to this problem. And surprisingly, Scold has actually been around since 2008 in Drupal 6. Uh, I say surprising because, I mean, I didn't find out about it until oh, a year, a year and a half ago. And most people I, I, I talk to about it have no idea what it is. And... I think you might be surprised at uh, how mature the module actually is and how, how, how sort of like uh, integrated the editor experience is. It was developed by a French company called Open Web Solutions, you can tell by the name probably, um, and sponsored by Radio France. Right? So um, that's sort of like, it was its genesis in, radio, in Drupal 6 and that's how it sort of like uh, got ported to Drupal 7. All right, so. I guess as a developer or site builder, it's important to know uh, why you would use Scold. So what are the use cases for it? So the primary use case is you want to maintain a library of media that can be reused throughout your site. And I, I think it's important to sort of like uh, think about that because reuse is one of the main purposes. If you have no need to reuse media throughout your site, there are simpler solutions that may uh, meet your use cases. Um, so, most of the things like media and scold are actually about reuse, so that you can build up a library and you can share things on that library, metadata, etc., and you can use it in multiple places on your site without uploading the same asset twice. Another reason you might use it is you have media items and you want to add fields to them. So Drupal 7, uh, the entity system, great, files as entities, fantastic. Common misconception, an entity means it's fieldable. 
it's not actually the case. Um, so Drupal 7 shipped with files as entity, but they weren't fieldable. And one of the really important things you want to manage with your media is metadata. And so there's certain data that applies to the image no matter where it is. And to have to enter that twice um, doesn't make a lot of sense. And so media, um, media solves this problem, but uh, so, so does Skull. And we'll, as I said, we'll discuss the differences soon. Okay, this one, <laughs> you want to give your editors a great user experience, right? Um, that is becoming increasingly important, and I think that uh, the media experience isn't great out of the box. Um, I think that there are some competing sort of like approaches. Actually, I say competing, but maybe uh, complementary. So Paragraphs is, is gaining a lot of traction. There's some talks uh, at the conference uh, this week about para the Paragraphs module. And it's kind of designed to give editors a flexibility to add arbitrary content onto their pages. Um, but as you see, um, Scold gives you that ability as well. Okay, this one, this one's an important one, like a really important one. Again, it, it relates back to the editor's experience. But it's, um, it's all about uh, giving them a great experience through a WYSIWYG editor, okay? Because that's where they're comfortable. So, like, uh, Scold will work without WYSIWYG, but it works really well with WYSIWYG. And that's probably another area where media has struggled, uh, in my experience. It's been a little while since I've used media, since I, basically since I found Scold. Okay, and here's a, here's a funny one. Uh, you need tighter control over file access. So, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to control access on files, but the, uh, the, file system, the file entity doesn't really give you anything out of the box. It gives you a hook where you can actually sort of like tell if somebody's allowed to use a file, but doesn't really implement it. It's not implemented with anything like the node access API. Um, and so, an access API for files, or I should say media, um, is, is something that some people need. And so Scold gives you a sort of like a, a leg up to getting that working. All right, so I, I keep on bringing up media, and it's pretty much because it's the main competitor, um, and it's the sort of de facto solution to this problem. So how does Scold differ from media? OK, so media. Um, is based upon this module called the file entity module. And the file entity module tries to take the, uh, the core Drupal file entity and enhance it. But one of the main things it does is it gives it fields, all right, or it makes it fieldable, sorry. Um, but another thing it does, which you may not realize, uh, is that um, it actually creates a whole lot of bundles. So remember, entities are the sort of like the, the main, uh, the, the sort of parent, and then you've got collections of fields which are called bundles. So Media actually uh, installs file entity, and file entity on installation goes through your managed files table and tries to sort them out into, into appropriate bundles. So Drupal, by default, just gives you the one bundle. Um, and so this is a kind of destructive effect that happens in the database. Um, and it's, a, it's an important one to sort of like uh, understand. It also, like, I mean, the, the Media approach is, well, we already have a file entity. Let's just make it the entity it should have been in the first place. Right? And, and there's nothing really wrong with that approach. Part of, sort of like a, an end point of that is that um, media requires everything to be a file in the managed file table. All right? So if you, you don't need to worry about this really, but it's an important distinction between how Scold approaches media and how media approaches media. So media always assumes that media is associated with a file, and that file lives in the Drupal managed files table. Now, that doesn't literally mean a file on the server. It can be a stream wrapper, which is just kind of a way of plugging, uh, of abstracting a remote data stream. And don't worry, it's going to get a little less technical. Um, or don't worry, it's going to get more technical as well. So <laughs> got to cover all the bases. Um, so um, media actually will work through uh, these stream wrappers. So Scold actually takes a different approach. And it's actually an approach that you probably done in Drupal 6 sites and possibly even in Drupal 7 sites. It's the approach where you create an entity type, uh, sorry, an entity, and then you associate that entity with the file entity. 
right? So um, Scold introduces this atom entity type. Now, you've probably done it, maybe not even, maybe without even realizing, but has anybody ever created a node and called it like an image node and then associated it with an image? It was a pretty common thing in Drupal 6 and it probably still happens in Drupal 7. That's essentially what Scold is doing, but it's removing a lot of the cruft of the node system, right? So it's a much lighter weight, um, a much lighter weight kind of like approach. But it's also, uh, it means that it can customise that entity type to work really well. And that's how it introduces things like its access control through that entity. And so one of the, one of the implications of this approach is that an atom, a scold atom, um, <laughs> I just realised I have a, si a slide defining what an atom is, but I'll talk about an atom like you know, okay? So, <laughs> um, an, an atom is essentially how Scald um, treats a piece of media. So, Scald atoms don't necessarily uh, reference a managed file in your system, all right? So, there's no requirement that they link to it. They can, and most do. And most also use sort of stream wrappers to embed things like external data sources such as YouTube. Um, but they don't necessarily uh, reference a managed file. And this is kind of important, and it's important now, but it's also important in the future because Drupal 8 is, well, has been having that discussion about how to handle media. And there were these two approaches put forward which were debated quite sort of vigorously. And it turns out that it, it seems at the moment that the scald approach where media may be an actual file but it doesn't need to be, is the approach which is, um, is moving forward. And I think at the end when we create a, a quick provider, um, you'll see why you wouldn't always want a digital media asset to actually be a managed file. Um, going on about how it actually differs from media. Okay. <laughs> Five and a half thousand sites report using Scold. Okay, been around since 2008. Five and a half thousand sites. How many people actually use Scold at the moment? <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're one of the five and a half. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, okay, compared to 212 and a half thousand sites reporting using the media module. All right, so you can see that. Uh, I say they're market leader. Like they've got a, <laughs> a fair sort of like percentage. Um, this next slide is a little bit sort of facetious, but uh, there are 40 open bugs reported for Scold. Any, any, any guesses for the next uh, transition? Yeah. Um, actually, actually, yeah. Any numbers? Anyone want to guess? You're pretty close. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually only 350, which was a disappointingly low number for me, actually. Like, and, and it certainly, it certainly didn't accord with my experience of using media because I reckon I could have. I could have logged half of those, <laughs> like, it, you know, like as I was using media. Um, so I guess what I'm saying, though, is that media, if you've been using... Oh, sorry, how many people use media? I should have asked that. Okay, so, like, I mean, quite a few. Um, how many people have found, like, the experience absolutely seamless? <laughs> All right. So um, that was my experience with media, and that's probably why when I tried Scold that um, it... Um, yeah, it, it sort of really appealed to me. Um, and just in terms of scaling, like, that's a really valid concern. Like, I mean, you know, media module has been sort of stress tested with those, that number of people using it. And that bug list, like, I mean, you know, it's, you would expect that because so many people use it for so many different reasons, you would expect the bug list to actually be a lot higher. Um, Scold, like, I mean, there's Radio France, I think, are running close to a million sort of like media items. Scold actually provides uh, its own sort of caching system, right? So uh, it is actually quite performant. Um, so how does, and we're going to get into a demo soon because talking about a great user experience isn't really a great way of seeing sort of like what Scold can offer you. Um, but like, I just want to get some preparatory stuff out of the way. So how does Scold work? Well. As I said, um, Scold defines kind of like, first of all, an atom entity type, right? So that's the main sort of like way of dealing with the media. And then it defines some core bundles. And those core bundles are essentially like image, video, documents, etc. All right, so familiar, probably familiar to you 
from working with media. That's kind of what media does. Um, Scold creates its code base in a very modular way. So one of the really big problems with media is that it's not very modular. A lot of the WYSIWYG integration was kind of built into the module and it made it very hard to sort of like, to get the core media working really, really effectively. And it sort of like I think led to a bit of a loss of focus on what they were actually trying to do. And so Scold takes a much more kind of like modular approach to the problem. So uh, it provides like a, a, a core and then various sort of like integration APIs to actually work on top of it. And it makes it very easy to develop for. Um, the other thing is it integrates um, into the editor experience in two ways. Um, one, any, yeah, three ways, two ways. Um, one is through just fields. So you can attach fields to um, any article or any sort of like node content type or probably any entity type. Um, and those fields can either be just standard Drupal text fields, which are in enhanced to accept media. So you can just drag and drop media into standard text fields. There's an atom reference. So an atom reference is like an entity reference field, but it's specific for, um, for scold atoms. All right, so that's that, and you would normally use kind of like either text fields or probably the atom reference field if you have a very structured idea of how you want your content to work. So maybe there's always an image up the top. You'd keep that out of the WYSIWYG area so that you, you, you forced that control on editors and didn't let them muck it up, basically. But then the, probably the most exciting thing is the WYSIWYG editor sort of experience. And it works best with CK Editor. Okay, so it, it works with the CK Editor plugin system, and CK Editor has a really nice plugin system, and that's that's how um, Scold works with it. So that's actually quite easy to enhance as well. Um, so I'm going to go through a, a quick demo of Scold for those of you who haven't used it or seen it. Um, so a few things about the demo. First, I'm, I'm using a Scold Galaxy distribution, which kind of is a distribution for testing. Scold. So it installs core, but it installs a whole lot of extra stuff. And then also, just to sort of like um, try to sell you on the approach, uh, I've also installed uh, Scald Maps and Scald PDF. So they're two other contrib modules that don't come, don't come with the Galaxy distribution, but they sort of like work well in terms of a demo and giving you a feel for um, how it works. So I'm just going to move over to... Um, Right. There won't be. A a <laughs> Any questions to cover this awkward pause? No? <laughs> oh, Matter. Uh, yeah, um, you might have covered it at the beginning. When you say a, a media type, is that anything that's filed? Yeah, media object, like no, it's actually like it's the opposite. It's it's a very broad definition of what a digital uh, what digital media is. So it may be a file, but it doesn't have to be a file. So okay. later on, we'll see so examples of where it can, can be all of the standard. Yep, yep. Okay. And, um, sorry, mm. when you say managed file, is it... Oh, so in a managed file in Drupal is any file that gets uploaded into Drupal, and Drupal kind of knows about it because it's stored in the database, and so you can start sort of like doing things with it. So. Uh, Drupal tracks certain files, so there's managed and unmanaged files. Yep. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Like Revisions. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that's a great question. Anyone else? No. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't actually have the answer to that, is what I was saying. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll take that as a comment, yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah. Uh, it was something actually I meant to look into before this, because I thought, oh, it's actually really relevant, so it's a great question, and I'll, I'll actually look into it, and I'll, I'll just tweet it out or something. Yep. 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 Yeah, well, yep. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you that. So that's a great question. It's coming up. Um, also, with uh, talk about access control, and, mm. and like, I, I'm doing a lot of work with organic groups. 
Oh, okay. So I'm saying that, okay, um, we're using a library, which is very good. But yep. But How do you control access to that library on a group basis yeah, or something like that? Saying, yep. okay, with this file, yep. I'm going to give, give access to those yep. three groups. Yeah, look, I'm going to talk about access a little bit, um, and so you'll see the system that it implements, and then it would be up to, like, I mean, yeah, later on I can discuss kind of like how you might go about it. Yep. So this is kind of like disappointing with um, high res. Um, ah, sorry, screensaver. Nah. Okay, so this is uh, a site, and as I said, I've, I've done the hard, well, not the hard work, I've, in, I've installed sort of like um, the media module. Now, the first... Uh, so, uh, <laughs> scold module. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice, um, scold presents itself as this kind of like a little um, dock on the side of your screen. Okay, so whenever you go to a, a page in an edit mode which actually supports any kind of scold, you'll, you'll see that bar there, right? And so it'll slide out and that presents you with your media library, right? So at the moment, I don't have any uh, media uh, installed, uh, uploaded, so my library is empty. Um, and then down the side, you've got icons for all of the various um, the bundle types, basically. All right, so you can see that there's audio, documents, flash, that just kind of gets installed with the Galaxy uh, distribution, um, and, and a few others. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously, as an editor, is upload a, an image. So that can be done from within this screen without actually leaving the ed editing interface. So um, it's through the icon. So because we've done it through Skull Galaxy, we've got uh, integration for the Popload plugin, right? So we can drag and drop sort of like multiple files. Um, so here's some I prepared earlier. Now, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So. What that's allowed me to do is go straight from the file system, drag into the interface. It's, it's queued these things for, for upload. And I can start the upload. And it churns through them. And they've all been uploaded into the temporary file directory. Um, I can, at this point, I can start adding a bit of metadata. Okay, So I can actually uh, do the sort of, if there's any kind of like, um, if, there, if there's any uh, generic tags or author you want to give for all of these items, uh, you can do it at this point. So there's a second step. So I click continue. And then it will actually list out all of the media that I just uploaded and allow me to, on a, uh, on a, per, item, uh, on a per item basis, it allows me to add in extra metadata, change the author, that kind of thing. Um, and when I, f when I finished, um, I just click on finish. It churns away for a while. OK, so uh, I've populated my media library. Okay, you can see them in, inside there. Uh, from there, I can actually go in and edit individual items, delete them, and manage the library. So manage the library from straight within kind of like the, the, the edit form. Uh, probably more exciting, uh, I can now sort of say to my content editor as well, you need to add an image. Uh, no problem. We can add in Han Solo. All right, so I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. Okay, so uh, we've just embedded an image. It was quite easy. Um, you'll notice that it actually provides a caption. Uh, the thing about captions is that, like, they're kind of not metadata. They're sort of like, in many ways, they're describing the relationship of this image to the current context. So whilst it sort of like gives you a default metadata here, it also allows you to um, it allows you to um, to edit that and change it. Right, so you can see from a uh, user editor, uh, from an editor's point of view, they can see the, they can see the media in there. I'm just going to save that. Okay, and there's my media in the page. Right, going back to edit, I can control the, the size that this image displays by um, actually right-clicking and editing the properties. And here, we'll get into context soon, but here I can actually change... Um, essentially, the, the image style, so to your question. Not your question, somebody's question. All right, so, and you can see that the WYSIWYG is updating to sort of like show the new format. You'll also notice that because the, the full uh, display mode has the authors and tags, it will give me all the fields attached to that media. They're not editable. So if I save that... All right, so 
that's sort of like the, the ease of use um, of, of using Scold, but it, it sort of, it does get better. So say they weren't happy with just that one image. They actually wanted a, a gallery of images. Now, you could drag them all in, but from within Scold, and I'll just get rid of that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so like they're bundles, so you can actually add the like the alt text at the theme layer, and it, so like yeah, you, um, yeah. So it's got like the alt text, I guess, is associated with the image itself as a sort of metadata, yeah. like rather than being done on a per instance basis, which is consistent with alt text because it's meant to be about the what the the content of the image, not the necessarily the context. Yeah, you can add all the, all of those kind of things on the entity itself. It comes from, I'll show you where they live because they're actually entities now, like a node. And so you can actually add all of that metadata onto the entity itself. It's not configured that way at the moment, but it's fieldable, so it's completely free how you do it. Yep. Um, so from, from within here, uh, I can actually, rather than sort of like asking my users to uh, add lots of images, um, I can make my toy gallery Right, this is sort of like, okay, this feels a little bit like not as smooth, but it's sort of like, a, it's still quite usable. So I'm just using sort of like a, a multi-delta field here and basically adding all of my images to my gallery. So it's something which, um, which users will be able to sort of like, um, get a feel for quite quickly, like a bit of training and an editor can do this. And so I'm just going to finish that. And so what I've done is I've added something to the library. I haven't actually put it onto the page yet. So again, it's seamless in terms of I don't have to leave the editing environment to actually add my media. Um, so here's my gallery over here. And I'm just going to drop it down in the page because the editor wants control over where it, where it goes. Okay, so that's just like doing a little bit of work there. And if I save that, okay, so now we've got the image gallery. So we've actually added items and added a gallery and then embedded it into our page. And this is using a sort of like gallery, a sort of plugin. You can you could create any plugin you want there. But you can see it sort of like gives use the ability to create arbitrary galleries on the fly and to and to embed them. So it's it's uh, it's based on the player. So there's um, yeah, like you, you you can implement them all as responsive. Yeah. Um, so that's images and galleries. Um, YouTube obviously um, a very common use case. So we can see here adding video is just like adding an image. It's the same user experience. You hit the first form. You choose which provider you're going to use. So I'm going to use uh, YouTube as a provider. And I click continue. The next thing is I need to, um, yeah, sound clear. I need to uh, just dump in a YouTube URL. All right, so I click continue and internet willing. Uh, it goes off, it grabs that YouTube video, it pulls down a lot of metadata about it, pulls down a thumbnail from YouTube. Um, you can see it's, it's pulling in the tags from YouTube and the author. Click on finish. Now, clicking on finish uh, puts in the library. It hasn't put it into the content yet. Um, for this one, I might actually want to um, drag it down into this media area. Okay, so maybe the maybe I, I have an editorial control where uh, I only want the YouTube video to appear at the top or the bottom of the page. So I can create a special field type for that. And you can see here that I can pretty much dump anything into that field type, but I can restrict that. Right. So if I only want this ever to be a video. I can restrict it to video. I don't think you can restrict it just to YouTube video. All right, so again, coming back here, I see my YouTube video is in my library. I drop it in. 
and there it is in the uh, in the uh, WYSIWYG, and you'll you'll find that the YouTube is just embedded on the page, and that's uh, the position of that is controlled by the the display on the content type, All right? Now, I, I, I think I'll, I'll be mindful of time and I won't show you, but you can actually just drop that YouTube into the gallery and have the YouTube work in the gallery. So you can mix images and videos within that gallery and drag them into a WYSIWYG, edit, WYSIWYG editor. A couple of other ones that I just wanted to show, though, because they're kind of cool. Um, one is uh, embedding maps. So we can... Yeah. We can uh, embed um, coordinates, like, well, addresses. So I'm going to put in the address for the convention centre. And... Sorry. Right, so that's basically using the address field and then uh, geocoding that. And so um, now I've got a reusable map in my media library, uh, which can just be dragged in. Okay, so like that, that now is available throughout the site to be reused. All of these things can actually be styled as well. Like this is just kind of the default way they drop in, the, the width and height and stuff. Um, finally, um, this is, I don't know if you've ever had this uh, requirement, I'm just going to delete that video and I'm going to deal with the use case where the user wants uh, to be able to upload a PDF, all right? So I'm just going just to choose a file. Um, this is just one I found on Microsoft Security. I'm in the Microsoft room, so it's appropriate. Um, upload that file. Right, but one of the requirements was uh, we need an inline image uh, uh, PDF viewer, er, we've all been there. Well, this, this module basically um, implements that inline media viewer. All right, so that's using the uh, Mozilla library for, for PDF viewing. And so you've got your PDF inline, well, on screen. Horrible user experience, by the way, don't do it. <laughs> but you're probably gonna have to deal with a client who wants it, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's kind of what you can do out of the box and with a few contrib modules. Um, a any, any, like, a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push forward, but any, any sort of questions or comment? Like, does it seem easy to, like, I hope so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, okay, which bit's uh, out of the box? Yeah, I've got a couple of slides on that, so I'll, like, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, we'll just very briefly look at it. But um, this is all based on views, okay? And it's all pluggable, totally pluggable. So this is the core uh, library that comes with the module. But you can actually uh, create your own completely separate sort of like uh, library using, using views or not using views. Um, but because it's views, it's all configurable via the views interface. So that search um, will search on some predefined fields. Okay, so you can, you can filter by type. Like, obviously, when you're using a million images, things like tagging is important. <laughs> like, uh, sort of the editor's actually doing some of that work. Um, but, yeah, and you can configure this view uh, by just going into the view, and you'll find that you get the filter options there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Twitter, yeah. There is two. <laughs> I, I have to show it. <laughs> it's... Um, because it's a really nice implementation. So um, I, I imagine some of you have had the user request that we want to pull in a tweet, and you think, oh, I could use a Twitter block module, but then I kind of got to expose an entire feed, and I don't have control of what's on the page, and that's a bit of a problem. So um, with the Twitter, um, with that, that Twitter score plugin, um, we can simply put in a unique identifier from, from Twitter and upload. Again, it's a two-step process, and there's a, there's a good reason for that, which we'll sort of see with our provider. In our library, 
Okay, there's our, there's our tweet, and I'm just going to remove that so it doesn't sort of like, doesn't get uh, overwhelming. Why can't I right click? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we get kind of like the preview there that's using a, a particular view mode, but we can actually um, see it in our page and it will Im Im embed the tweet uh, using the, the, the Twitter styling. All right, and so that's totally curated. Um, so a nice use of this is to actually have a multi-delta field reference, all right, and then just actually put the work into curating the tweets you want to appear on your page. Yep. Five. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Um, so, going back to... That was the demo. That's, that's kind of like hopefully uh, selling it. I'm going to move through this really quickly. And a lot of this, to tell you the truth, like, I mean, yeah. Skull terminology. Okay, so Skull has some weird terminology. Um, and it, it came from... Uh, building it in six and then applying it to the seven entity system. So this is kind of just a mapping of names you'll see and what they really mean. So atom is just an entity type. A unified atom type is an entity bundle. Um, a context is a view mode. A transcoder, for most parts, it's an image style. Okay, so somebody asked about um, image styles. Um, so a transcoder is, for the most part, an image style. Although with video, it's anything that happens between the source file and the rendering. So you could sort of like do encoding there or something crazy. Um, and a player is just a field formatter. Configuring Scold. Um, this is the bit which we'll probably uh, skip through so we can just talk about the final kind of like use case. Um, the configuration page uh, is kind of like a, a little bit confusing. Um, uh, but it's very similar to the way media approaches the problem, where you've kind of got like a view mode on the actual piece of media, but also a view mode on the kind of like the wrapper, the wrapper entity. Um, so I'll put these slides up. But essentially that's how it all sort of fits together with fields. Okay, so you've got your parent entity, which in our case was an article. It's reference to a unified entity type, which is kind of like the scold atom, okay? And then that atom actually has a display, which is controlled by the Scold context. That won't have made any sense to anybody who has never used Scold, but it's uh, maybe a useful thing to keep in mind when you actually encounter uh, the configuration page. Um, quickly on access control. Scold introduced its own access control mechanism on top of the normal Drupal roles. It introduces, you probably noticed, if you were sort of like watching those uploads, there were these checkboxes for fetch, create, view, and delete. Okay, so they're the kind of granular scold provided access control. And um, the one that's the most confusing probably is fetch. And fetch really controls whether or not it appears in lists. So a list or a view, i.e. your library. So if you don't have fetch permissions, it's not going to show up in your library. Right, very related to kind of like the, the view permissions. In terms of how it's implemented, um, Skull does a couple of things. First, Skull just checks to see if you've got a Drupal permission of administer, st administer Skull. If you do, then you're allowed through. But then, this is where it gets different. If no, it actually goes through the Skull access control sort of API. And Skull essentially sends out like a, you know, it, it, it implements a hook, it invokes a hook. And it asks lots of modules to say, can this person use, look at this? And it passes them the permissions of the of the, um, in those checkboxes, and then it, it's up to you to provide a module which actually comes back and says either no, yes, or ignore. It's a restrictive permission control system by default, so if any module says you can't see it, you can't see it, right? So it, it doesn't do the kind of, oh, whoever gets in first actually has control over whether you can see the file. Um, if we get to an ignore, so nobody's actually given an opinion on whether somebody can see it or not, uh, then we just go through standard Drupal permissions, right? So the out-of-the-box experience, so like uh, to your point, uh, if you don't install via the Galaxy distribution, which I wouldn't recommend that you do unless you're just trialling it, uh, it comes with Skull Core, which gives you the entity and the access control and that kind of stuff, but doesn't do much on its own. It gives you an Atom reference field, which is the one that we just drag and drop to. It gives you the D&D library, okay? So that's a library which abstracts the library from drag and drop, and it provides all of the CK editor and other, other WYSIWYG integration. 
Then it gives you the Scold D&D library, which is actually an implementation, okay, so which is just that slider that we saw. But as I said, that's completely pluggable. You can build your own if you wanted to. Um, and then it also gives you this confusingly multimedia editorial element, which essentially just allows you to add, uh, m uh, add Scold atoms into text areas and text fields. Okay, so that's what comes out of the box. The only one that's required is Scold Core, but I would recommend that you actually turn on all of these modules. Uh, in terms of providers, a provider is just like a source of a digital media. So we looked at a YouTube provider, a Twitter provider, those kind of things. Okay, so they're all providers. The core ones, the, come, the ones that come with the distribution, are audio, image, YouTube, Vimeo, and daily motion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pick the odd one out. Um, so they're all in there. Okay, some useful contributor providers that we use today: Scold Twitter, um, Scold Galleria, and Scold Map. And very quickly, in my remaining minus thirty seconds or something, creating a provider. Okay, so it's incredibly easy from a developer's point of view. There's only a few hooks that you have to implement. So what we're going to actually do. This is not complete or well tested. Disclaimer. Um, we just want to show an example of something that's not handled out of the box by Scald um, and show sort of like the minimum number of hooks required. The use case that we're doing is polls. Okay, so Drupal comes with a polling system, but you have to embed it via sort of like a block. Wouldn't it be great if an editor could just embed a poll into their WYSIWYG editor where it probably makes a lot of sense? Okay, so that's the, the, the example we're going to go through. First of all, uh, because poll doesn't fit into image or video or audio, we create a new bundle. And the way you do that is very simple. You create a new module, to start with, obviously, um, and in the install file, you add the hook install, and it just, you're just creating a poll bundle. All right? So it's a very simple static method on the Scold Atom controller. Okay? Just one line, and it will create your bundle for you. And so what, that's, what that has done is it's told Scold that there's this, uh, this new bundle, but it hasn't provided, like if you clicked on create new poll, you wouldn't have any options because there is no provider yet. That's just set up the bundle. The next thing that we do um, is, 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 provide that, um, is provide that bundle um, through, uh, duh, duh, why do I feel like I'm missing a slide? <laughs> um, so, oh, actually, no, no, I think that's right. Yeah, um, so this actually, this hook, it's a scold hook, and it's the scold add form, all right? And so we're actually telling it that we've got a new form, and it's providing, um, it's providing a, a, a poll. That gives you the first step. So when you actually click add new poll, that will give you the form. The next the next step, remember there's two steps to that thing. The reason there are two steps, think about Twitter. The first thing you have to do is say what Twitter ID is. The second thing is to make a meaningful form, Scold actually has to go off and grab stuff from Twitter and put it in and then give you the second stage so you can actually tweak it. So that second stage is controlled by this hook. And in this hook, all we're actually going to do uh, is use the node ID of the poll we want to embed. Um, and finally, so that's enough to get it into Scold and allow you to upload it and manage it through your library. The final thing that we want to do uh, is hook in um, to the pre-render pipeline. Okay, so uh, Scold has this pipeline where when it's rendering things, it calls a lot of hooks. And so in this case, it's only calling the hook uh, specific to the, to the atom. Um, and I, I check the, the, the mode, which is a little bit like the, op, the, the, the dreaded op variable in some of old Drupal. And all I'm doing in this thing is I'm loading the node based on that node ID. I'm creating a, sort of like um, a, a view of that using the, the full view mode, and then I'm adding it to the rendered property of an atom. Sorry, so to the player property of the rendered atom. So, ah! <laughs> No questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I actually, um, I, I'll just show you doing that. So I've actually created the poll, and I'll just embed it. So, and again, this is really like, a, I actually know at least one crucial flaw in this. Um, so because I added a bundle, you can see it down here. Now, unfortunately, I'm on the computer without sort of like any even graphics thing, so I just reused the Twitter logo, <laughs> but I used the blue one, so I know what it is. Um, you'd probably want to do a little sort of poll icon. 
Um, so it's just asking me to upload a node ID. So again, because we're just doing the very simplest, there's like, I mean, that's, that's terrible. You'd obviously want some kind of auto lookup to find poles in the system. But we'll continue. Okay, so now we've gone from that first form to the second form. Uh, we need to give it a title. All right, and then we can click on finish. Now, here we go. Let's see if that works. So, okay, so that's the poll that I just created. I'm just going to drag it into my WYSIWYG editor. Okay, and in the editor, you can see that we're actually getting some, um, some responses. I'm going to save that. Okay, so there's our poll, like it, it's the poll rendered. Now, um, obviously, like in terms of layout, that may not sort of like work for some people because it's sort of like a block level layout. So with any of these, um, you can edit properties and I'm, I'm just gonna put an alignment of left. Okay, so it, it updates the WYSIWYG. You can, you can tailor the styles more so that you get a better feel for what it's gonna look like. But when we actually save that, that, item, that, that property uh, is floating that, that pole off to the left. Now, um, I probably don't have time to show you it's like changing the state of the poll. So if I open that, that becomes a node vote form. But it also exposes one interesting thing, which is that is actually cached by Scold. All right? Um, so if you're worried about embedding something um, that's going to get rendered a lot, Scold has its own level of caching above the page cache. That's it. <laughs> <All right. laughs>